Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back. Gran Turismo Sport, weekly race action, or daily race, whatever it's called. Now, this is from a previous week, because, well, the, the, the weekly races have, have been getting a little bit repetitive, I might say. Um, maybe you agree with me on that. Uh, so we're getting the likes of Fuji in Group 2 about 8,000 weeks in a row. So this is from a previous week. This is basically the Lamborghini Cup. As you can see, everyone's gone for the Huracan. I think apart from one guy at the back who's gone for the Subaru, the lone wolf back there. Now coming into here, just smashing this guy. Ramming for money, making that cash rain down. Although, uh, kind of caused a concertina effect with the guy behind and we actually get pushed off and go down to last momentarily as that guy goes now down to last. Now coming through the final turn, 12th position, you see the Subaru just ahead of us and they're, re they're, they're all here just smashing 50 shades of grey out of each other through that final turn. Up, up another position, let's see what we can do. Last to question mark challenge, 13th to where as we come through the first chicane. Dragon Trail Gardens, no not Gardens, Seaside three chicanes uh, separated by three hairpins that's kind of how I summarise this circuit coming through here then what's going to happen are we going to ram for more money oh no the Hungarian going right up the inside with a big lunge and get a poor exit here though as we get the good run into the slipstream we're going to go to the left hand side which gives us the inside for the upcoming chicane here the triple chicane up the inside we go just scanning that radar it's very close we're side by side as we come through here, good racing between the two of us, racing very close indeed. Well, we are going to filter in now to 10th position. Up now behind the Russian, in the slipstream, down the hill, into the big braking zone down the hill. Go semi-defensive, not sure you really had to do that. As I was a little bit further back than I would have liked to go for the move. So coming through into the infamous chicane of death and taking it nicely, not not committing die through there into the slipstream towards the final corner and we have the Russian on our inside now on the brakes before that hundred board and uh, running a little bit too deep we're going to have to tuck back into that slipstream for the second time here and go for the move on the main straight there we go putting over to the right hand side which is going to give me the inside for the little kink coming up but then it'll be the outside for the turn here the main turn into the corner we go. I think I've got momentarily ahead. Bit of contact. Uh, but I am through. Up into ninth with now an Italian. Just up ahead. Can we catch up with him and get one more position? Two more laps left to go. Just a, just a four lap race. This is a daily race B. Or was. He's coming to the nice degree right. Okay. He's just going to push me wide. Right. You know what's going to happen now, mate. I'm ramming for money. Even though I'm on the wrong account. I'm on the Super GT account. But who cares? When money is up for grabs, you don't get away with stuff like that, mate. So you can go for a cheeky little punt there. And uh, punt him wide. Let the money come rolling in, lads. Oh, yeah. That bank account is getting topped up today. Overtake, uh, No overtaking. Yellow flag. Oh, there we go. Someone's off. Up into eighth. So we've made a semi-decent recovery. and Oh, a little bit more of a recovery. That guy getting sent back in time. And space. And dimensions. As we go up into 7th, went from 13th to 7th. Can we get a 6th place? Come on. It wouldn't be a Super GT video without that. As we come through the final turn, we can tuck into that slipstream then as we come up to the finish line, which is halfway up the hill. Okay, here we go. Is it going to be possible? In the same car, though, it's going to be quite hard in the same vehicle. Crossing the line, almost a 6th place. It's going to be a 7th. 13th to 7th after the disastrous lap 1. A decent enough race, I suppose. And just a sight of things to come for this race. I'd like to just do one race without much practice, just to kind of get an insight into that race. But we go into qualifying here. Let's have a have a go at getting a quicker lap. 45.9, so just below 46. Wasn't really good enough on the grid. Of course, qualified in 10th from that previous race. And you're just never going to win a race from that far back. So we really do need to improve that lap time. So through the first chicane. Nicely on the throttle, and I think the main thing is getting on the throttle as early as possible. So for example here, just breaking before that shadow, but then getting full throttle before you hit that apex. Or at least half throttle on the apex and then 
full throttle as soon as you can after. Over the crest, down the hill, ghost just up, uh, up ahead and maximising track limits as well, using all of the kerb available through this chicane and we do so on all three apexes. So we are momentarily just up on the ghost, although just down as we go into this one. So just going into second gear and swinging the car in. This car does like to be put sideways a little bit to get more angle through the turns. And again, the ghost just slightly ahead, just under a tenth ahead at this point here, going into the uh, portal to the Shadow Realm, just on the apex there. Ghost gets it all wrong, so I'm going to definitely get uh, definitely going to beat the ghost as long as I get this final turn right. Breaking just before the hundred board, down a couple of gears to second, looking for that late apex. There we go, powering out to the outside again, using track limits all the way to the edge, and then taking the shortest distance to the finish line by keeping it over to the left-hand side. What is the lap time going to be? 44, 45, 45.3, six tenths better. Puts a seventh from the grid for this race, so didn't really improve our grid by too much, but we definitely would have been further back if we didn't improve. So now, starting 7th. Now this guy up ahead at the Spaniard, he's got the most horrible looking livery and honestly this really annoyed me just driving behind this guy. It's like some Homer Simpson thing. But it looks like some weird embryo... I, I don't even know, it just looks horrible. The, the back of his car. And it really annoyed me just driving behind this guy. So I really wanted to get, get past him as soon as possible. Because just giving... He's just giving me some disease by looking at that. Honestly, I, yeah, I just can't be looking at that for too long. So coming down the coming down the hill into the chicane, we're going to look for a good pass, perhaps on the way out instead, as he's gone in a little bit hot. We can tuck into that slipstream as well, of course, as he's gone a little bit wide on the exit there, lost a bit of momentum, tuck fully into the slipstream, get a close view of Homer Simpson's three eyes or six eyes on the back of that car. Up the inside we go. Spaniard very wide as well. That's two positions for the price of one. There we go, up into fifth from seventh. That's a good rise. And uh, on the back of the, uh, the Polish driver now in fourth, coming through the chicane of death. How is this one going to go? And he's just smashed into the wall, smashed the apex, and has warped himself into the realm of deadly shadows. I'm up into fourth, up the inside of the Italian. Oh my god, this is a meteoric rise on lap one from seventh up into third on the final 10 there, four positions and a good start, a really good start, very solid beginning to the race and he's right on my tail, I'm going to move to the right hand side and cover the inside line here, the Spaniard up ahead with a three second penalty so I only really need to go on his tail and the leader, the Italian, very far ahead as we just swing across there, just cutting across the nose of the Italian behind just to keep our position so can we just settle into third place now? Yes, we can, as we don't have to go defensive. The guy behind, not quite on my tail, judging by the radar. So now we can turn our attention to trying to catch up with the Spaniard, who, of course, we only really need to get onto his tail uh, to beat him, as he has that penalty. But you don't really want to risk just staying behind someone. I think it's still best to pass them, even if, even if they do have the penalty. So down the hill, through the triple as we sweep through this fast set of corners. He's gone a little bit wide up ahead. Just going to try to uh, uh, close up slightly below that 7 tenths, as we do now, to get into that slipstream range. And the guy behind actually has got momentum on me as well. I don't think quite close enough. Breaking on the end of the kerb, and that kind of sets you up nicely onto the apex and on the power as early as you can, as we set ourselves up for the chicane of death for the second time in this race. Over the kerb there, don't have to take this one too much. Going over to the right hand side, lifting slightly, get more weight on the front end of the car to get it to turn in slightly more than normal. Tucking fully into that slipstream, the Spaniard not really deciding to fight this one, so just taking the normal racing line. I think it's probably the wisest decision. I think when you've got a penalty, you just want to minimize time loss. So he just kind of lets me go, doesn't really want to defend. The more you defend, the more you bring other people into play from behind. So he just lets me go. Up into second, that's a good uh, first two laps. Uh, the first half of this race has been very successful, and that's the fastest lap of the race, actually quicker than the leader, so, uh, who has already, as I try to get my words out, has, has already got 3.3 seconds in hand, mostly, most of that from the first lap. A bit of contact into turn one, but we survived that. As I was actually quite late on the brakes myself, and uh, I guess the guy behind a little bit later than that. 
So we really just need to settle in here, have a good lap. If I can try and replicate my laps from qualifying, then I'll be pleased with that. So it was a 45.3 in qualifying, just did a 45.5, so pretty good pace comparatively. Normally if you can match your qualifying pace in the race, then you're, then you're doing well. And uh, normally that's something I am okay with. I suppose it could be just that my qualifying pace isn't that good, but I suppose at least I'm consistent. So I'm going to go defensive here, moving over to the right-hand side, and... Um, there's actually a bit of contact. I think I was early enough in the move to cover the inside line. So we're going to preserve second place. So not a good move through the chicane of death. Not quite getting absorbed into the realm on this occasion, but um, obviously bringing attention of the Spaniard and the Italian from behind as um, that kind of really just was not a good run. And uh, and got the got the guys behind a lot closer than I would have liked. So the first two laps, really on the front foot, going forwards, overtaking, being aggressive, and then as soon as you get into the position that you need to be, uh, bar one, of course, we're not in the lead, but uh, up into second, which is probably the best we can get here. As soon as we get there, then it seems like we're on the defensive, and I'm start I'm starting to drive worse. But this is definitely something that's true in motorsport and and in gaming motorsport as well. Sometimes it's a lot easier to be behind chasing and following and catching up than it is to be in front defending and worrying about people behind. So I think that's, that's true in this in this race here. It's really a race of two halves. The first two laps on the front foot attacking and feeling comfortable. But then as soon as I'm the one being hunted, that mentality has changed and I'm making mistakes. Albeit only really through the chicane of death, which is a very difficult complex to get right down the hill missing the apex slightly but not too bad he can still get the power nice and early to power out into the double chicanes just coming up here so three tenths behind is the spaniard now if he gets through it's not too much of a problem of course he has that penalty still can we get through here okay didn't really get that entry quite right we're going to graze the wall and it's going to be a similar situation to the last lap we're going to move over to the right hand side once again to cover the inside line and the spaniard goes to the left hand side the italian is right behind as well and there's a british guy in fifth who's not too far behind as well. The Italian up the inside with the move. There was contact. It's all kicking off now through the final turn. It's our turn now to knock 50 shades of grey out of each other. And this will be Olaf Biscuit on my right-hand side from fifth position up into second. On the line, he's taken it. I'm down to third. So the, the Biscuit man there, trumping the Oreo wagon, coming from fifth to second on the final corner. Savage moves from him. Good stuff. So third place overall. I mean, still a good race because I started seventh. Uh, from seventh to third. Could have been second. But we go again. And unfortunately, we're behind the silly 6i Homer mobile again. Which is horrible to look at, honestly. I, I need to just put a Peggy 18 sticker over the front of it because it's just disgusting. Um, does anyone agree with me on this or am I just being weird? Anyway, through the triple chicane down the hill. I'm going to try to get the job done as early as I can. Looking up the inside, nope, not quite. He's going to go defensive into the turn. Can we go for the cutback? Looks like we can. Definitely a possible move here as uh, he went in too narrow on the way in. It's going to cost him on the way out. Not quite enough though. Going to back out and let him go ahead. As you, don't really want, you don't want to be fighting side by side through here. As he carries too much speed in, into the wall. I was really worried that I'm going to get a penalty for that. As I think there was a tiny touch. I grazed him on the way through. I tried to slow down as I could see that he was going to get sent into the realm. But um, luckily not get the penalty. I think he deserves he deserves to go to the realm just for that horrible livery. It really, it really is just shocking. So we're going to fast forward a lap here, as you can see. And kind of nothing really changed. The gap was pretty much exactly the same for myself to the guy in front. Still got a Spaniard in tow. And I'm really just waiting for a mistake at this point here. Because that that second lap, I just couldn't really gain on the guy ahead. 45.8 was my lap time. Not, not too bad. Could do better. But uh, if we can just be consistent. Actually, we're not going to have to really wait too long. As the Italian on the exit of the first chicane. Running a little bit too wide onto the gravel. And slowing himself right down. So race on completely now. With uh, two laps left to go or less than. He's made another mistake. So cru two crucial mistakes in a row and I'm going to go up into second so hopefully we can uh, learn from our mistakes in the previous race and mistakes being just making 
silly errors through the chicane of death and uh, really just drawing attention into that final turn which is a good overtaking opportunity really wide entry to that turn so it's, it's a really wide corner that final corner on this circuit and uh, you just really don't want to be on the back foot going into it so you do need to set yourself up nicely for the chicane of death hitting that apex will be a little bit too much and it unsettles the car as we kind of go over the over the curb beyond the curb and the car kind of jumps up and down as we come through then through the first chicane we're going to go over to the right hand side you kind of want to graze that curb on the right hand side ideally you really do need to maximize the entry on the right hand side to really get the fastest run through the corner and we get it right this time around three temps behind is the italian and the spaniard luckily for me maybe that spaniard can go for an attack although here contact through the turn i thought i'd break too late obviously the italian going even deeper the contact was made but we survive if we can go through over the line to begin the fourth lap now with one lap left to go we are towing two people here the italian and the spaniard i'm going to give them the right hand side here i'm going to cover the left hand side which gives me the inside he's on the outside he's on the right hand side you see his nose there goes a little bit too hot in and gets too much oversteer on the way through and i'm going to keep the position now we have six temps seven temps can i make the most of this gap just to keep keep them at bay and ideally have a nice safe run towards that final turn which obviously proved our undoing on the previous race so through this turn over the hill over the crest and back down the other side the gap now over a second as the Spaniard has jumped ahead of the Italian and now he's going to give me chase through the last half of the final lap here sweeping through this turn I've kind of done this track enough now to kind of have a consistent run it's just that chicane, you know, the final chicane is just so difficult to get dead right because you really do have to run it on a knife edge to get maximum speed through it. And, you know, of course, the, the barriers are right there on the wall. The walls are right there and it's so easy just to make one little mistake and you lose a lot of time if you, if you get it wrong. So can we get it right this time around? Gap 1.3, I can afford even just to take it even more careful as I do. Raising the wall on the way out, so not the best line at all if they were you know right on my tail that would have cost me i think I, I could afford to make that kind of mistake as i was 1.3 ahead gap down to 0 0.8 so it would be quite close coming up to the line as they might be in my slipstream but i think i've done enough now to come through to finish in second so that was the result we were looking for in that in that second race but well, we just lost it on the line but now just coming through to finish in that second position and quite pleased with the result there so holding off the pack in in some senses there first half of the race really attacking second half of the race holding off the entire pack behind but really enjoyable and i do hope you enjoyed the video as well if you're new to the channel maybe consider subscribing and if you did enjoy the video then do think about hitting the like button thank you so much for watching everyone i'll see you next time goodbye